You know, sometimes the world gets it right. Well, sort of. <laughs> Maybe they don't get it right, but they do have a way of inspiring you into thinking things and realizing things that maybe you don't normally think of or would have thought of before. It used to be that Christianity led the way when it came to inspiration, but then kind of got off track on music and became such a big deal that now sometimes some of the best lyrics, or at least little parts of lyrics, are sung by seculars. <laughs> or people that don't believe in God. For instance, like that song that Don't Stop Believing. Don't stop believing. Da, 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 da. Now, I don't know what the rest of the lyrics are, but anyways, the first part is cool. I like that. Don't stop believing. And that's kind of what God was telling me today, that you know a lot of people kind of get sidetracked because they have loved ones you know, that they're worried about. They look out on the world and they see them caught up into some kind of you know, clutching kind of mud-sucking quicksand that is dragging that person down and dragging them away from either their godly heritage or maybe even they've always been ungodly and you're worried about them and you have fears and anxieties that God isn't going to save them or God hasn't done so in 10 years, 20 years. Oh no, it's been a lifetime. Don't stop believing I mean, God, as strange as it may seem, may have already decided that person is saved. But he hasn't revealed it to you yet because you might have messed that person up. <laughs> or it's just a matter of his timing and his will and his way. Because God wants us to pray always to pray without ceasing, to never give up, to never quit. Because even the man who was hanging there on the cross next to Jesus didn't require a whole lifetime of good works in order to be righteous. He didn't require a right attitude, a right understanding you know, to ask Jesus, remember me. All he did was simply looked over and realized that it was the end of his life and he wanted to be saved. So God saved him. That's what we need to recognize, is that we may spend a lifetime sometimes praying for someone or caring about them. There may be that loved one that you always wanted saved, and they may not be until their last breath and dying breath that you'll be there for. You'll be a witness. You'll be sitting next to them, still waiting to hear them say the words you know, that they want Jesus in their life or their heart. I know for my wife, one of the biggest challenges for her was to accept whether or not her mother was saved. Because she had kind of religiously believed it. She kind of like, kind of, you know, played around with it, you know. But because she was married to me, she had discovered that there was more to this being saved than just going to church. So she was concerned for her mother, and she witnessed to her and shared with her before she died. And she felt confident that her mother had made a decision to give her life over, her eternity over to Jesus so that she would be spared from eternal damnation. And that's comforting to her. But you know, those that are alive and well and living in the world today, you know, we all have concerns over. We have a hope for their salvation. Because we have this hope not wrapped up in our own faith or our own demonstration of what we believe in or what we need to believe in or what we have as far as some type of obvious viewpoint, but we have this hope in Jesus because it's He who is at work both to do and to will of His good pleasure. He is the one who is causing salvation to work in person. So when you pray, recognize quite simply today that it's not your work that's being done because it's not according to works of righteousness which I have done, but according to His mercy He saved me. And God is merciful. He is loving. Did he not even say that that unrighteous judge, that very same judge who might have said, ah, condemned, but that unrighteous judge that Jesus described said, that woman, that woman, she's been bugging me day and night and she's come before me over and over and over and over again. My God, 
Give her her request. Give it to her. Give it to her. Whatever she wants. Just get her out of here. God, <laughs> believe it or not, wants you to be like that. He wants you, in the regards of salvation, to get on your face, to get on your knees, to get your heart completely, solely lifted up for those that really can't pray for themselves and wouldn't even make the choice had they been given the opportunity. But those that are saved, those that have come to the place of salvation, whether they know it or not, they probably had a loved one, a grandmother or a grandfather, maybe a righteous generation before or three generations back. Maybe it was right now, just someone in the church, some little old lady or some little old man, maybe some young person, maybe a child, praying to the Lord God Almighty. And not only is God hearing their prayer, but God meets them where they are, right there. And He says, yes, to them, yes. And they go, what do you mean yes? I'm praying for their salvation. Yes doesn't mean anything. And God says yes. Because you see, as much as we love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, we have yet to wait to see the day of salvation when all things will be revealed. The heart will be made known. And it will be obvious, even those that we may not have understood, whether they were saved or not, may and have be there with us. And those that we thought were saved may have and perchance may not be as we thought they were to be. So God is just in all His ways, but He also wants us to pray every day. So don't lose hope. Don't lose your conviction. Don't lose your persuasion. Don't lose that with which God has given you to pray for a person, no matter how long it takes. Because His timing really isn't our timing. <laughs> his ways are not our ways, and neither are His thoughts our thoughts. The Lord makes His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of God, the Father, has declared Him. The brightness of His glory and the express image of His person, the God of this world, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Make thy face to shine upon thy servant. Save me for thy mercy's sake. Let me not be ashamed, O Lord, for I have called upon you. Lord, by your favor, thou hast made my mountain to stand strong. Thou didst hide thy face, and I was troubled. But blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. When the Lord brought back Zion, we were as those that dreamed a dream. For we came with songs of rejoicing, singing of the gladness of our God, of how God had saved us. When we of the Jesus people came together and we rejoiced in what God was doing and we looked forward to His coming, we never stopped believing that Jesus is coming because we know we are the last generation. It wasn't as though some great revival had happened to the world and suddenly now it filtered off into some yuppieville or some religious denominationalism. But rather, if you go to the same Jesus people that were telling you from the very beginning, Jesus is coming, then yes, our hope is not lost. Our hope is not deferred. We are the last generation. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make His face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up His countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Yes. Don't stop believing. Jesus is coming.
and yes, your loved ones. God is working for them.